meat. Triceratops. While I'm sure it needs no introduction, I'd be willing to bet that there's quite a bit you may not know about this triple horned animal. It's one of the best understood dinosaurs of all time, meaning we have a lot to unpack here, starting with its humble discovery in Colorado, having been dug up by George Cannon during the spring of 1887. This was during a period that I've mentioned in my Ceratosaurus video, known as the Bone Wars, where paleontologists Othniel Marsh and Edward Cope competed in a sort of fossil race. The first remains of Triceratops only consisted of a pair of horns attached to a fragment of the skull. This wasn't very much to go off of, so when the fossils were brought to Marsh, he quickly labeled it as a large bison and named it as such, a different species to the modern day American bison. This all happened a while before horned dinosaurs, called ceratopsians, were understood in any amount of detail. Some fossils were found by Marsh's rival, Edward Cope, a few years before, but were incredibly fragmentary. What really sealed the deal here was a giant skull found one year later by fossil hunter John Bell Hatcher. It was brought to Marsh and was given the name Ceratops, which was one of the first horned dinosaurs officially recognized. It wasn't until the skull was studied more that the third horn was found. Marsh then changed his mind, giving rise to the name of Triceratops, meaning three-horned face. Two years following it, 31 more skulls were found by Hatcher. A ton of variations were found within these and many other skulls, leading scientists to propose tons of different species names for Triceratops. At the end of the day, when the debate was settled nearly a century later, only two species remained, Triceratops horridus and Triceratops prorsus. All other skulls were decided to be individual variations within these two species. In the awesome and off chance that you see a Triceratops, you'll be able to tell what species it is by looking at the horns. Triceratops horridus, which means rough in Latin, had a short nose horn with brow horns pointing more horizontally. On the other hand, Triceratops porcis, which means forward in Latin, had brow horns that curved upward and had a much longer nose horn. Most have the mental imagery of Triceratops being around the size of a large cow or buffalo, maybe 2,000 pounds, give or take. But in reality, it was more than five times that size, closer to an African elephant the largest terrestrial animal alive today. Weighing in at 6 plus tons, it was no joke, and at 25 feet or 7.6 meters long, and 8.5 feet or 2.6 meters tall, it would tower over modern creatures. Its head was enormous compared to its body, comprising one third of its length. While its popularity comes from the frillin horns, what makes Triceratops and its relatives truly special is found at the front of its skull, a beak. The core at the top of the beak consists of what's called a rostral bone. Triceratops and other Ceratopsians are the only animals who have this bone in the entire animal kingdom. Because Triceratops had to compete with large hadrosaurs for food, it also had similar ways of eating. Inside its mouth was a dental battery which I've talked about in my Shantungasaurus episode. This was a giant mass of teeth that were all connected as one unit. Moving up, the nares are exceptionally large, being way larger than it really even needed to be just for the nose alone. It also had some other complex structures within the opening, leading some scientists and artists to reconstruct it with fleshy nasal structures that maybe could even inflate for display. This Definitely seems weird, but it's honestly not at all impossible. Now to talk about offense. Its brow horns were around 3 feet or 1 meter long, with the front horn being a fraction of the size. Given the trend with other horned animals like rhinos and elephants, they likely had a keratin sheath surrounding them, meaning they got even longer, and may have formed different shapes and textures. We know for a fact that these horns were at least used against other Triceratops because of injuries preserved on their skulls. For other dinosaurs, they may not have needed to use their horns that often. 
I suppose that having two broadswords attached to your skull doesn't exactly look like a free meal to even the largest of predators. And finally, the frill. If its horns were swords, this was the shield. It was formed in a way to protect its neck against attacks coming from above, while also being a possible use for display structures to show off to other triceratops during mating season. Males likely had elaborate patterns and colors on their frills, or at least some kind of distinguishing trait to indicate health and maturity. There's also the idea that herds of triceratops would create a circular shiltron around younger individuals in the case of a predator coming to hunt the herd. This behavior is seen in some oxen, but is unsupported in triceratops. They likely didn't create huge herds, but may have had small groups consisting of singular families. In this case, it certainly may have been possible for them to create many shiltrons to protect the younger calves. Moving on to the body, which wasn't that anatomically special for a ceratopsian standards. It did, however, have some very interesting things around its body. Scales. We actually have fossilized skin impressions from various ceratopsians. This isn't the same as mummified skin though, but rather a place where the animals hide indented into soft ground, and that ground in turn fossilized with the prints intact. We know that Triceratops had large protruding scales called tubercles, which were surrounded by smaller scales. These were on the mid and upper parts of the body, with the underside showing scales like those of crocodilians. One discovery, nicknamed Lane the Triceratops, shows holes going into the large tubercles. Lots of people jumped to the conclusion that these were a good spot to put porcupine-like quills growing out of them, a nod to dinosaurs like Cetacosaurus, which had a bushy tail of non-lethal quills. The hard truth is, we don't know, and we won't until more material is uncovered. We have a ton of skulls from them, possibly numbering in the hundreds. What's awesome about this is that they aren't all from adults. We've uncovered so many that we have a nearly linear growth of their ontogeny, showing what they look like as they grew. These skulls are organized by babies, juveniles, subadults, and adults. The youngest skull recorded measured at a measly 15 inches long, meaning the total size of this very adorable animal was pretty close to a pit bull. There is a bit of controversy regarding the oldest individuals though. Another ceratopsian lived at the time of Triceratops, and in the same area, Taurosaurus. They looked almost identical except for one thing, the frill. Taurosaurus had a gigantic and elongated frill with two holes on either side. Some scientists had proposed that Taurosaurus and Triceratops are actually one and the same, with Taurosaurus representing the oldest and most mature individuals. But just consider how much change they would have to go through between a Triceratops and Taurosaurus looking skull. That's some serious growing pains, and there are even some Taurosaurus remains that we know are too young to be considered adults, so it seems that the theory is down for the count at the moment. Triceratops lived in several areas, but it's most popular for living in the aptly named Hell Creek, where some of the largest, most powerful, and most culturally significant dinosaurs ever existed. The environment is often compared to the redwood forest in California, with much more open areas that created floodplains and even a few swamps. Living here, alongside Triceratops, was also the largest predator known to walk the earth, Tyrannosaurus rex. If you've ever wondered why Triceratops was built as though it were constantly preparing for a battle, this is it. Tyrannosaurus was a hunter of Triceratops, and there's evidence to boot with titanic bite marks found in their frills, broken bones, and puncture wounds that could only be made by one animal, though Tyrannosaurus was an ambush predator. Instead of some glorious battle of giants as often depicted in media, it was likely a very quick game of win or lose for whoever saw who first. Among these two legends were some other notable animals, like Edmontosaurus, a hadrosaur quite similar to the Shintangosaurus from episode 31, the heavily armored and tank-like Ankylosaurus, the dome-headed and agile Pachycephalosaurus, the even quicker and bird-like Ornithomimus, some dromaeosaurs to even out the playing field with juvenile Tyrannosaurus, and Anzu, 
a crested animal similar to a modern-day cassowary. Some non-dinosaur animals include Didelphodon, a carnivorous marsupial mammal, the crocodile-like Champsosaurus, and flying pterosaurs in a variety of shapes and sizes. This is usually when I list off the media that the animal has been found in, but for Triceratops it would take quite a while, so I'll go through the biggest hits. Its first film debut was in The Ghost of Slumber Mountain, released in 1918. It's also been featured in the earlier King Kong movies. Hasn't gotten too much love in Jurassic Park though, only being featured in the first film as a sick and pregnant mom. It's since been replaced with Nazutoceratops in the Jurassic World series for whatever reason. Even in one of the arguably most famous dinosaur documentaries of all time, Walking with Dinosaurs, it made an appearance only in the form of a pre-killed carcass. Prehistoric Park with Nigel Marvin had similar design hints from the Walking with Dinosaurs series, and Triceratops was featured much more prominently there. Most recently, it's shown up in Prehistoric Planet, where we got to see some Triceratops on Triceratops Combat, and a representation of Yoshi's Strike, a specimen with the longest recorded horns of any Triceratops. Animated films featuring the dinosaur include Fantasia, which may be its first animated depiction altogether. There's also The Land Before Time, with Sarah the Triceratops as one of the secondary protagonists. It was also the main dinosaur protagonist, named Chomp, in the Dinosaur King anime show, which continues to have the coolest dinosaur animation sequences I've ever seen. Upcoming Pele Media featuring Triceratops includes the documentary called T-Rex, which follows a few Tyrannosaurus throughout their lives, where it'll face off against a Triceratops at some point. And last, but certainly not least, is Walking with Dinosaurs Season 2. Having just been announced in the last month, we have a Tyrannosaurus and Triceratops confirmed to appear in one episode, and I for one can't wait. And that does it for this month's Prehistoric Animal. This is one of the first household names I've done for this series, besides the very first episode, three years ago, with Megalodon, so it's nice to finally break that wall. As always, remember to like, subscribe, and all those other YouTube shenanigans, then post your suggestions down below for a chance to have your animal chosen for a future video. Head over to twitch.tv slash paleoentertainment to hang with the community live, and join the Discord link below to hang out with nerds like you. Love y'all. And as always, keep your pencils and your horns sharp.